everybody, my name is Emma Panuski, and thank you for tuning in to another Let's Paint Live. Um, so tonight we are going to be painting this really sweet Valentine's Day inspired painting called Batch Made in Heaven. Um, if you are new to our uh, Let's Paint Live series, then welcome. If you are a returning viewer, then it's good to see you again. Thanks for tuning in. Um, every, well, every Monday night, uh, the first yeah, every Monday night yep. at 8 p.m. <laughs> Eastern Time, we do a Let's Paint Live, um, and we teach you how to paint a painting in just about an hour. And we always use our wonderful Let's Paint Live kit, which comes with 24 beautiful two-ounce bottles of folk art acrylic paint and a really great 10-piece uh, artist variety brush set. So if you like our Let's Paint Live series, then go ahead and pick up that kit. That way you can tune in with all of our Let's Paint Lives. Um, Stephen White is in the studio with us tonight, so if you have any questions throughout our live stream, uh, comment them down below. Stephen can answer those. Hey, Stephen. Hey, Emma. Yeah, they don't even have to be questions about the painting, guys. We'll take any questions. We love yeah. talking to you guys. <laughs> Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, as always, we've got BJ from Utah checking in on our hey, YouTube BJ. stream. Um, and like Emma said, if you want to check out our Let's Paint Live kit, the link is in the description uh, below, wherever you're watching, whether that's Facebook or YouTube and it'll take you straight to our website where you can get your kit. Awesome, and also, um, if you go to platonline.com slash Let's Paint, you can see all of our Let's Paint Live classes and view them there so that you can have hours and hours of fun painting with your Let's Paint Live kit. Absolutely. Yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start off by going through our supply list just to make sure that you have everything that you will need to paint along with me tonight. So you're going to want to have an 11 by 14 canvas. Tonight I'm using this 11 by 14 canvas board. You can use a canvas board, a stretched canvas, a wood panel, whatever you prefer to paint on. Of course, I have my 10 piece Artist Variety brush set. Um, and then the color specifically from our Let's Paint Live kit that I'm gonna be using tonight is coffee bean, berry wine, lavender, red apple, cinnamon, Dutch Aqua, Wicker White, and Bright Pink. So those are the colors you're gonna wanna have. Um, I have my water basin, my palette paper. I have a little piece of chalk, which I prefer to use to sketch out different shapes on my paintings, but you can have a pencil or whatever you like to use to sketch, thing that's, you know, not permanent. And, um, and I also have a blow dryer, which we will be using tonight. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some lavender to my palette. This is what we're going to be using to base coat the background of our painting. And I am taking my three quarter inch flat brush. Emma, did you say um, 11 by 17 canvas? 11 by 14. 14, thank you. No problem. But the great thing about this painting too is, um, you know, there is a subject matter. We have our super cute cookies, but it's kind of like a pattern piece too. Um, once you find out how to paint one cookie, then you will have fun painting several cookies, which really means that you can paint whatever size canvas you want and make your cookies as big or as small or as plentiful as you would like. We try to do that with a lot of our pieces, mm -hmm. uh, make it something that you can paint on pretty much any size canvas, um, whether that's Let's Paint Live, Paint Night, Craft Break. We try to do that with everything. Yeah, definitely. Valentine's Day is just around the corner. Um, let us know, you guys, if you have any plans for Valentine's Day, if you have any plans for maybe a girl's night or a date with your significant other or with just a loved one, a best friend, a parent, a sibling. We would love to know. Me personally, I am probably just going to buy myself some candy <laughs> and watch TV on the couch. That sounds like a great night, honestly, Stephen. Yeah. What was your favorite uh, candy to get 
uh, as for like Valentine's, like at school when you were a kid? Oh, that's a good question. You know, like too. back in the good old days when like everybody had to give everybody something. Yep. Yeah. I really loved those cherry flavored heart lollipops. Those, those were good. probably my favorite. What about you? I am a, I'm a Reese's man mm -hmm. myself. That's another great choice. Speaking of Valentine's Day, um, this is obviously a Valentine's Day themed painting, but we have a lot of really great seasonal Let's Paint Lives for you to check out on platonline.com slash Let's Paint. We have really fun Valentine's Day paintings. If you wanted to have a paint night with your partner or a friend or a family member, that would be a really fun Valentine's idea. And if you know an artist in your life, the Let's Paint Live kit would honestly be a really great Valentine's That's gift. That's true. Dad, if you're watching, get that from mom. <laughs> uh, we just did uh, Amazon Live today, and we uh, showed off a Galentine's Day uh, champagne and wine bottle project. Oh, yeah. So if you're having a Galentine's Day party with your gal pals, that's a great uh, project to bring to the party. That is a good one. Okay, we're almost finishing up base coating our canvas in lavender. Okay, so once you're done base coating your canvas, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush and then blow dry this. We have a good question I wanted to relay to you. Okay. Uh, I noticed that Andy paints his canvases like this too. Is it better to paint random strokes all over versus up and down or side to side? You know what? That is a great question. I think it's just a preference thing. Um, you can paint vertically, horizontally, or in random strokes like you see Andy and me do. I think it's really just a preference thing, but that's a great question. Yeah, that is a good question. Okay, so once your canvas is nice and dry, that's when we're going to break out our little piece of chalk that went missing when I started blow drying. Here it is. And we are going to start sketching some of our cookie shapes. So I'm going to put that into frame a little bit so that you guys can get a good view of it. Okay, so as you can see, we kind of have two focal cookies. So I'm going to start with those first. So I'm going to paint a, a very loosely shaped heart. I don't want you all to feel intimidated by this. Um, your heart does not have to be perfect. Most cookies are not perfect. Once you cut them out with your cookie cutter, they sometimes they can get a little wonky in the oven. So the more imperfect your cookie is, the more realistic it'll look probably. So we have our imperfect heart shape. We have our circle. Those are our two focal cookies. Then I have another cookie peeking in here. So I'm gonna do kind of a little half circle, a little quarter circle here, and then one more heart coming in at the corner down here. And those are the cookies in our 
painting tonight. So we can set our chalk down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and apply some cinnamon to our palette paper. I think it's very fitting that one of the main colors we'll be using in this painting is cinnamon, which is something pretty popular in baking, and we are painting some baked goods tonight. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to take my number 12 flat brush, and I'm going to um, fill in all of the shapes that we just sketched out with our cinnamon. And one thing to keep in mind is we're going to apply some icing to our cookies so we don't really have to paint um, all the way inside our cookie shapes because we're going to be covering that up but you do want to paint just enough so that you can kind of be uh, liberal with wherever you decide to put your icing The first time uh, I saw this after you finished it, I, it really made me want like a jelly donut or something. <laughs> Did you get one? Uh, no, I haven't. And I think maybe I've been missing out on one. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you need to add that to your Valentine's Day grocery list. Right. Emma, when you go to uh, like a bakery or something, do you usually spring for like a jelly pastry? Is that like in your wheelhouse? Mm -hmm. You know what? My family is from New Jersey and in a lot of uh, bakeries in the Northeast, they would have those really yummy like sugar cookies with the little um, chewy cherry centers. Mm -hmm. Those are my favorites. Those are good. What about you? I, I like jelly in pastries i like jelly donuts i like uh does do bear claws have is that what they're called yeah i think bear claws have jelly in them maybe i'm saying the wrong word but those are very good they are very good when i went to seattle i had uh like a this piroshki place that i went to like three times while i was there those are good i don't think i've ever had one of those before yeah they're they're, they're tasty we have any Seattle viewers in the house, let us know <laughs> if that was just a random place I went to or if it's like known. If that's part of the Seattle culture. Yeah, the Piroshki scene in Seattle. <laughs> okay, so once your canvas starts to look like mine, I'm going to go ahead and rinse my brush again. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, use my blow dryer to dry this again.
once your painting is dry, I'm going to go ahead, you can either take your finger honestly or a dry paper towel, and I'm going to remove some of this chalk just by wiping it off. It'll come off really nicely. Okay, so now what we are going to do is we're going to go ahead and add some bright pink onto our palette. And if you want to take out your piece of chalk again to sketch out the um, inner heart shapes of our cookies, you can go ahead and do that. Um, I am just going to go ahead and start painting, but if you want to sketch it out, then by all means, feel free to do that. Okay, I'm going to flip my canvas a little bit to make painting the inside of this one a little easier. Avery says, so cute. Aw, thanks Avery. And I want to remind you guys too that um, if you paint along with us tonight, we have a really great Facebook group called Let's Paint with Plaid uh, where we have a really supportive community of fellow artists at all different skill levels that share their paintings. Um, Chris Williams and Andy Jones have a really great series in our Let's Paint program called Lunch and Learn where they do, um, a, they do lessons uh, twice a week on Tuesday and Thursday um, in that Facebook group and they teach some really valuable um, painting skills and people like to post their paintings in there. A lot of times folks will paint, uh, paste, post, yep. <laughs> thank you, post <laughs> their Let's Paint Live paintings after we're finished tonight. And it always is such a treat to see what you guys painted along with us. So check that Facebook group out. It's called Let's Paint with Plaid. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add some wicker white to my palette. And we are going to mix up a little ratio of about three parts wicker white to one part cinnamon. So I still have some wet cinnamon on my palette paper, but if you don't, then go ahead and add some more and I'm going to go ahead and mix that ratio. We're looking for um, really warm cream color. Okay. 
maybe a little bit more cinnamon. Okay, so once your paint colors are really well incorporated, I'm going to offload some of that paint because I have quite a bit of paint on my brush. And now I'm going to go ahead and paint in the icing on our circular cookies. So just kind of a weird kind of curvy circle. Make it look like somebody just really quickly smeared some icing on our cookies. I'm going to go ahead and touch up some areas of our bright pink. Bright pink is just one of those colors in nature that is a little bit trickier to get to be super opaque. So Yeah, you're going to have that same problem with yellow most of the time, yep, too. Yellow, bright pink, all of those really bright kind of almost neon colors, just the nature of the pigment. It's a little bit trickier to get it to look opaque. So we're just going to go ahead and really quickly just give it a rough second coat. Emma, can you say the name of the uh, cream color you used one more time? Yeah, um, to make that cream color, we mixed a ratio of about three parts wicker white to one part cinnamon. Cool. Okay, so once you are at this point, I am going to go ahead and blow dry my canvas again.
Okay, so on our heart-shaped cookies, you can kind of see that we have a little bit of an outside rim. So next to our palette, we are going to add some coffee bean, which is that really pretty dark brown color in our Let's Paint Live kit. And we are going to mix another little mixture of paint here. So we're gonna go for like two parts cinnamon to one part coffee bean. Make it look like the cookies got nice and toasty in the oven. Okay, so once your colors are nicely incorporated together, we're gonna go ahead and um, I'm taking a number six flat here and we're gonna go around and about the width of our number six flat is how wide we want to paint the rim of our heart-shaped cookies. So just carefully, and while you're doing this, I want you to remember the more pressure that you apply to your brush, um, the bristles are gonna flatten out and kind of fan out and you're gonna have a wider brush stroke. So I'm not applying very much pressure and it's, you know, if you um, are a little bit unsure of what I'm saying, I want you to test it out on your palette, whatever you're using as your palette. And you'll see that the more pressure the more you push on your paintbrush, the wider the brush stroke. Um, so yeah, that's a good thing to keep in mind. We don't want very much pressure on our paintbrush for this step. It's definitely like a crunchy on the outside, uh, chewy on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> You're making me hungry, Steven. That's the look we're going for. I'm gonna do the same thing to this cookie in the corner. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush now. And since we're already practicing the same kind of uh, method, I am going to go ahead and mix another color. So I'm gonna take that color we mixed earlier and that was about three parts wicker white to one part cinnamon. I'm gonna take some of that mixture and add just a touch more cinnamon to that. Making kind of like a toastier light brown color. Okay, so now taking that mixture that we just went ahead and mixed up, I am going to do the same technique on our circular cookies. So following that icing instead of the actual cookie this time, we're going to add that little toasty outside rim.
And then up here as well. I'm going to rinse my brush again. And now I'm going to add some apple red to my palette. And same kind of deal as before. If you want to sketch this out first, then by all means, feel free to do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and start painting. We're gonna go ahead and draw, or paint rather, a little heart inside our circular cookie. So whenever I'm drawing or painting a heart, I like to start with kind of the little Cupid's bow. Do one bow coming in. Then just try to mirror that as best as you can. Okay, a little something like that. Rinse my brush again. And now, I'm going to add some berry wine to my palette. So I'm gonna mix a ratio of about two parts apple red to one part berry wine. Do we get a really pretty deep red color like that? Okay, and on the left outer rim of our heart, we are going to paint a little shadow. So. As I'm doing this, I'm starting at the dip in the heart and I'm curving my brush this way. As I round the top, the peak of my heart here, I'm gonna apply a little bit more pressure onto my brush. If you remember us talking about it earlier, that means that we're gonna get a wider stroke. So I'm not applying much pressure in the valley. As I go up to the hill, I'm applying more pressure and then as I dip down, I'm going to release that pressure. And then that is going to dictate how wide our brush strokes are, like that. Okay? And I like what we just did. I like the stroke, but I want to make this color darker. So I'm going to go back to the palette, back to the drawing board, and darken this color a bit. And then just do that same exact stroke. like that. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush. There's dimension to these cookies. There is, truly. Okay, so I'm gonna take my bright pink and we're gonna make a little shadow on our heart cookies. So like two parts bright pink to one part berry wine. And 
And again, we are going to do that same technique, except we're going to start a little bit um, further in than we did. So at the peak here, we're not applying much pressure. And as you can see, when we kind of turn the corner, a little bit more pressure, less pressure in the valley. And then as we round the side of our cookie, more pressure. And then you can kind of go back and make some of those lines wider if you'd like. I'm going to flip it a little bit and we're going to do the same thing to our corner cookie. Be a cute name for like a little bakery. Corner cookie? Yeah. Right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, you guys. So now we've added some shadows to our cookies. Now it's time to add some highlights. So um, to make our highlights, we're gonna mix a ratio of whatever color the center of our cookies are with some white. So I'm gonna add a little bit more wicker white to my palette. And for our bright pink center, we're gonna of course add like two parts Wicker white to one part bright pink. Let's make a pretty little light pink color. Uh, we had a question from Kat. They said they uh, missed the first part of the stream and they're asking why cinnamon. Why the color cinnamon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We have some pretty um, cool color names in the folk art line. We were talking about how funny it is that. Cinnamon is an ingredient you use in cookies, and it's also an ingredient you use in this painting tonight. Yeah, it just feels right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to take this light pink color and add some little highlights. So uh, touching down with a soft amount of pressure, and then kind of hitting it with a little bit more pressure as we round the corner, and then as we lift up, less pressure. And I'll try to show you guys that a little bit better. So not much pressure, more pressure as we round the corner, and then as we lift up, less pressure. Okay, and then for these little lines on the side here, we're applying the same amount of pressure, not much pressure, to make a small little straight line. Do the same thing down here. Less pressure as we round the corner, more pressure, and then as we lift up while we're rounding the corner, less pressure. Like that. Okay, I'm going to rinse my brush. We're going to mix a very similar ratio for our heart cookie here, except um, instead of the bright pink, we're going to, you guessed it, use red apple, apple red. Cute. OK, 
Okay, you guys, so that is, that's our cookies. So I have some bright pink and some apple red on my palette, but we need to add some Dutch aqua to make our little sprinkles to fill in the negative space in our painting. I'm gonna take my number eight flat brush and we are just gonna paint some really simple, short little lines on our painting to make some sprinkles. Uh, Emma, can you talk about the shading color you used for the inside of the heart? I think it was a mixture of berry wine? Yes, this one was about uh, a two to one ratio of more parts uh, berry wine to less parts apple red. Okay. Okay, so let's get into it painting our sprinkles. I think, you know what, I said my number eight flat, but I don't think I meant it. Let's use our number six flat, my bad. So whenever I'm doing something like this in a painting, I like to make the colors evenly spaced out so that there's not too many of one color near each other. But Another way to do it is if you really think about it, if someone sprinkled out these sprinkles, they probably would not look like that. Some colors might be near each other where you didn't expect it to be, so it's up to you really. Let me know in the comments too what you call these guys. Yeah. Sprinkles, jimmies. Some places call them lollies. Really? That's a so. new one. Uh, we also had a question about what you used to shade the pink heart, I guess the bigger cookie. Yeah, so that one was a similar ratio of like two parts bright pink to one part berry wine. Gotcha. I'm gonna add some bright pink. Last color, I'm going to use my wicker white. Okay, you guys, and that is Batch Made in Heaven. So thank you so much for tuning in with us tonight. It has been a pleasure painting along with you. Um, make sure to follow along with us next Thursday night at, um, 
I believe 7.30 p.m. Yep. Eastern Time um, next Thursday, um, the first Thursday of every month at 7.30, we do um, a Let's Paint Live. And for this one, we are painting a really fun Valentine's Day painting called Just Lovely, which you can find the event for. It's, it's actually on the, the oh, shelf behind you. Oh, can you see you. it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This beautiful painting right here, um, which you can find the Facebook event for. Um, on Plaid Crafts Facebook page. Uh, don't forget to check out our um, Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group. It's a really awesome group with lots of supportive members um, and I will be looking in that group tonight so if you post your painting um, then um, I will be happy to see it. Don't forget to check out our Let's Paint Live kit on PlaidOnline.com. Again, thank you guys so much for tuning in and we'll catch you next time. Bye.